What's happening YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to talk to you guys today about what um, our plans are uh, for this business uh, that we started here. I'll try and make this as quick as possible. I don't want to bore anyone to death, but uh, this is good for us too because it kind of motivates us. The more we talk about it, the more it motivates us to, to keep trekking on forward and uh, push through any hurdles that we come across. So, um, so yeah, so I mentioned before, uh, my wife and I, we operate a residential assisted living facility. Um, we've been open for business since August of last year, 2017. And uh, we have two residents currently right now. Um, let me, before I continue, let me first say, we attended a, a seminar last year, last uh, May, I believe it was. And, um, it was very profound. The, the people that we met, the, the, the gentleman, Mr. Robert King, um, he was very informative. Um, he, did all the, he did all the research that we needed and he informed us very well uh, to get out here and do what we got to do. Um, so I'll put a link in the, in the description um, to his YouTube page. You should go and check him out and uh, contact him if, you're, uh, if you would like to get some more information. It's, uh, it's called Assisted Living University. Anyway, so um, back to us. Um, so yeah, so we've been running, we've been doing this since August of last year. And uh, so far, it's been pretty successful. Now, we're currently running unlicensed, um, but uh, by law, we can have two people, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna follow the law uh, while, we, uh, while we do our, while we're uh, applying for our license, which would allow us to have more than two people in our home. Um, uh, so yeah, so so here we are with our business. I won't go into details as to how much we make on a monthly basis and stuff like that, but uh, you do the research and you can have an idea. I will, I will give you a, a range. So, um, so with this one facility operating in license, the range in, the range overall can be anywhere from as low as 1,500 a month to upwards of 10 grand a month, depending on your location. Um, I'll just say that in our area, we fall somewhere in between, maybe just slightly below in between. I'll just leave it at that. So needless to say, it's a very, it's, it's a very lucrative business, but if you're doing this, if you plan on doing something like this for the money, don't, because it requires a lot of sacrifice on your part. It requires a lot of patience on your part. I mean, these are elderly people. The, the, these people's families trust that you will take very good care of them in your home. And believe you me, and I'm sure you've heard the news reports of people that just uh, just treat treat these these elders of ours like crap. You know, um, so. You know, if you if it's about the money for you, then you might want to look elsewhere. But if you're a hard worker, you don't mind sacrificing a little bit of your youth, and uh, you know, you, and you take pleasure in helping other people out, this might be something that you could look into. Of course, there's many other things. So ultimately, our goal for this business is for this business to um, facilitate some kind of monthly income renewable income from now until we die basically um, because there's always going to be there's always going to be someone that's aging people always people age and there will be a point in time when people need help all right so and that's why we're here and other facilities like us that's why we're here so it's not like something that, like the inventory will run out or anything like that, uh, or it's too much competition. Believe me, there's enough people in this world and this, you know, that will need your help. Um, and if the price is right, they will come to you and you provide that help for them. So, um, so my wife and I, we, we plan, we, our plan is to um, retire in the Philippines. Um, and uh, just manage the business from a distance. Actually, not even manage. Just it's like just be the figurehead for the business um, eventually, because the way this will be set up is 
this is our first home and once this is licensed we, um, we hope to in about four years time we hope to have upwards of eight people in this home um, we'll have four bedrooms right now this is a three bedroom two bathroom house the master bedroom is ours so we have two guest rooms so you're probably wondering how you're gonna fit eight people in two bedrooms well you're not we plan on putting two extra rooms on the house so we'll have four four bedrooms for our residents and one master bedroom for a staff or an administrator of some kind um, each bedroom can hold two uh, two residents in twin beds and of course they have to be certain dimensions or whatnot but our home thankfully falls within those dimension requirements every state has different laws by the way um, so yeah, so eventually we'll have upwards of eight residents in this, in this particular location. We plan on possibly opening up a second location. Um, it's just one of those things where you really don't need to stop. You just keep on going. There's no limitation to how many facilities you can own as long as you manage it properly and you provide sufficient staffing and training. So um, if, you, if we want to throw out some numbers, um, let's say I'm not like I said I'm not going to talk about what we what we make but this is a fairly decent number um, I'd say let's say three thousand dollars a month per resident is what you're um, charging for for and it's all inclusive you provide 24 7 care food three meals a day three square meals a day healthy meals a day snacks entertainment internet you name it you provide it for them laundry uh, you name it um, health care they the family or they themselves they set up um, their own health care because this is a non-medical facility so there's no nurse that's needed on 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 staff or, or on or whatnot but um our two residents have visiting uh, nurse practitioners that come every month or every three months or whatever they, they schedule and they do physicals and and whatever so um, but yeah you provide everything so back to let's just throw out some numbers so I can move on okay so for the sake of this breakdown uh, since we'll be adding two additional rooms I'll use this uh, five bedroom floor plan as an example um, the monthly rates per resident fluctuates so I'm just gonna give a reasonable 3,000 per resident per month um, in this demo so you can house two residents in each room that means you'll have a total of two four six eight residents each room will gross you six thousand so that's six twelve 18 24,000 total gross per month that's at capacity overhead operational costs and this is from my personal experience give or take like I said I won't give exact numbers but um, it could run you around 4,000 a month and that covers your mortgage it covers insurance it covers utilities you name it food everything um, to staff a home like this 24 hours a day seven days a week and I said eleven dollars and eleven cents because that gave me a, a round number of eight thousand per month and an administrator um, you know say you pay him two thousand or a salary of four thousand dollars a month uh, that's so all that adds up to sixteen grand a month um, so that gives you a net profit of 24 minus 16 which is eight thousand dollars a month now that's that capacity and that's with paying for an admin see right now jojo and i we work the facility ourselves we only have two residents and actually we plan on working it ourselves um, up to four residents and beyond that that's when we'll hire staff so uh, we're saving quite a bit of money as you can see but um, say when we're ready to move to the Philippines, this is pretty much how it's going to look for one facility. Um, now, that's at capacity. You can 
expect that you won't have a f full bed you know facility uh, at all times so even if you were to take out two residents out of the equation that gives you a total gross of 18,000 your overhead will still be the same uh, maybe a little bit less but so you're looking at a net profit of 2000 and we all know that $2,000 being sent to the Philippines or actually, you know, after taxes and all that stuff like that. So, but say $2,000 being sent to the Philippines is a lot of money. And that's just for one facility. Now, funny thing is an admin can oversee three facilities, no more than three facilities, at least unless in the state of Florida. So um, if you were to open up two more of these, you're looking at profits of shoot let's see that would be so the uh, so you take out the admin for the other two so that's an additional four thousand so that would be uh 12 plus 12 is 24 plus 8 is um was that 32 yeah 24 6 yeah so that's possible if you had three of these facilities running that's possibly $32,000 a month in net profits. Um, you know, and these are just rough numbers, but you can see where I'm going with this and why we've chosen to do this. And that's with you not even being there. That you're not even there. So, so yeah. Anyway, back to my discussion. Check this guy's channel out, you know, Robert King. Uh, he'll, he'll fill you in on all that stuff. And, I, and I'm here to tell you, this is real. This is real. I've been to other facilities and I was in shock. When I walked inside their home, I was in shock. It's like literally, you don't know that it's a facility from the outside. It looks like your normal standard everyday home. You walk inside and these elderly people are sitting down playing cards, playing chess, watching TV, doing a crochet, reading a book, sleeping, eating. They're just living their lives in this home. It's like a little, like a little clubhouse, you know, for, for, for the elderly. So it's, it's so freaking rewarding just watching them do their thing. Um, but so yeah, so, so back to my wife and I, we plan on opening, we plan on having maybe two tops. It could be more, you know what I'm saying? But we do want to invest in prop things. That, so wait, let me not skip ahead. So anyway, so we're, this will be our renewable source of it. This is our retirement. Mind you, I'll probably, we, Jojo and I will get our social security and uh, I'm not getting any kind of pension because I have not stayed at any job for more than 10 years. Uh, I think I actually when I worked at United Airlines I did 10 years with them and I got I get a letter in the mail from uh, the investment company or whatever that tells me what I will get and it's like pittance it's like a little bit of money that I'll probably get you know or whatever but you know it's it's ridiculous you work your entire life only to be Told that you can't work anymore you know and you still have mortgage payments you still have credit card bills you still have car payments medical bills I mean it's ridiculous and now they're talking about trying to take away Medicare Medicaid and all this other crap like that it's it's ridiculous so so our plan is to provide a service that there's a demand for um, and yeah, we're in competition with the big boys, but like I said, there's enough people, especially in Florida. You, 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 you mentioned Florida, especially Fort Myers area. There's all kinds of elderly people that come down here. They call them snowbirds. They come down here during the winter, winter months up there, and they come down here to, to bask in the sunlight because they had their arthritis, their stiff joints, and all that stuff like that. Um, and eventually they fall in love with the place and they move down here. So there's more than enough people uh, to provide uh, this service for. Um, so we're not worried about that. Uh, I'd say the most difficult thing about this job would be the marketing and getting you, just letting people know who you are, where you are, and how much, how much you charge. You know, and word of mouth, you know, if, they, if your service is good. So, um, so anyway, so our plans is to um, retire in the Philippines. Right now we're looking at uh, investing in real estate. Um, while we're undergoing this 
growing our business, you know. Uh, we're, we're thinking about investing in real estate. We're looking at possible condos. We're looking at like farmland. We're looking at uh, little townhouses. We're looking at uh, even just uh, custom built homes, you know. Um, we have a, my wife, she has a large family. And I call them my family uh, in, the, in the Philippines. And honestly, we don't need much. I mean, if we're talking about, if we're, if, we're, if we're bringing anywhere from 10 to 30 grand a month, and that's being sent to the Philippines, you do the math. You know, that's an insane amount of money to have for two individuals to live comfortably and to have fun and travel and see, see the world. That's way more than enough money. So why not share it? So um, yeah, we plan on investing and whatnot. Um, hopefully God will provide us, uh, bless us with a child of our own. That has not occurred yet, but maybe that's because what we're doing and he knows that now would not be the right time. Uh, we, we might even consider adoption or we have more than enough nieces and nephews uh, in the Philippines that we could provide for. And here I have my two little girl, my two, my two nieces, my two beautiful nieces, my sister's daughter uh, that, you know, they, they need college money, too. You know what I'm saying? So uh, so, you know, I mean, we're not greedy people. We don't ask for a lot. But we do know that we need to prepare for retirement. That is paramount. We got to be prepared for retirement. Um, especially me. My wife, she's healthy. You know, you know, we could work out and whatnot, but me, I, I have diabetes, uh, blood pressure issues, cholesterol. I don't look like it, but it runs deep in our family, and uh, this is what I go through. This is, I mean, that's for another video. So, um, so yeah, we're looking at investing in some real estate. And, and just so you guys know, um, lately I've been, I can't, I think the terminology is trolling. I don't even know if I'm using that properly because I think it has a negative context. I, I don't think I'm a troll, but I've been seeking out other individuals on YouTube and other social media sites that are going through similar things like my wife and I. Um, and spe specifically, because uh, my wife is Filipina and I'm black, black and Filipinas that are married and planning to move to the, retire or move to the Philippines or whatnot. And you know, I've, I'm doing research. Every day I'm doing research. So if you see me and I join a live chat or if I uh, join some kind of discussion or something like that, it's, I'm not trolling, I'm not getting in nobody's business. You know, I don't like to waste time because really I don't have much time right now. But it's because I'm trying to learn something, learn from other people's experience so that I don't waste time and make mistakes as I go along. So um, if I ask a question, it's, it's an earnest question. It's, it's, uh, it's, um, and that's only because I, I just don't want to waste any time. I'll, I'm 40 and I'm, I would love to retire. So I'm giving myself seven to 10 years before I'm, we're, we're set. Right, God's willing if I'm still alive around that time, but I'm giving myself seven to ten years before we're set. Um, and I think that's a good time frame, I, you know. So, uh, what else? Oh, um, so yeah, we talked about investing in real estate. Another thing, I've before meeting my wife, I knew nothing about the Philippines. I'm not gonna lie, I knew nothing about the Philippines. Uh, my family's from the West Indies. My father's from Trinidad, my mother's from Jamaica, uh, I have family in Trinidad, uh, I used to visit all the time and whatnot, and I love it, I love it there, I love, I love my island country, I love my island food, but when I went to the Philippines, I was, I was truly, I was both saddened and amazed at the same time. I was saddened because of the economy and how the, the, there's like, I don't even know if there's a middle class. It just seems like there's an upper class and a low class. And, and, and kind of like that's where this country's going along, going uh, the direction this country's taking. But it's ridiculous. People living in squatter homes, I mean, eating trash, pot, what do they call it? Pock, 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 or something like that. Um, Mind you, there's poverty all over the world, but my wife is from this country, so that's where I'm focusing on, you know. 
um, things like job opportunities. All of my wife's nieces and nephews, cousins, they all need jobs. And they're being told, oh, you're too short, you're too dark skinned, uh, you're too fat, uh, you're too old. What the heck is going on over there, man? You know what I'm saying? I mean, we got some hardworking people that are being turned away because of some art, superficial stuff like that. I mean, it's ridiculous. So in that aspect, I'm truly saddened. But I'm amazed because of the camaraderie that I see and observed, that I saw and I observed when I, when I was there uh, for our wedding. I mean, it, it really touched my heart. I, I, it's like I'm feeling teary eyed just thinking about it right now. It just touched my heart to see the positivity and the, the kindness, the smiles, the, the laughter, the joy. You know, and I wish I would see more of that here, but uh, I don't know. So, what we plan on doing, yeah, we plan on investing, but we would like to. Also, and I know there's other people that do the charities and stuff like that, and we would like to also contribute some way. So we're trying to plan on seeing how we do that. I think more specifically, I think the education is very important. So maybe some kind of scholarship to send, you know, people to, you know, these young children to school and get them through college somehow. Because, like I said, when you do the whole exchange ratio and everything, monetary exchange, um, we could really provide you know, for quite a few. And even if we just impact a handful of people, you know, at least, at least I know that we tried to do our part. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's in a lump sum, that's kind of our plan. We're still, like I said, it's growing pains. Every day, we're learning something new, something that we forgot. Right now, we're going through our taxes. I mean, this is the most money I've, we've ever made just since August, since opening up our doors, just since August to December of last year is the most money I've ever made in that period of time in my entire life. And I'm not complaining, but it, it's, a, it's a learning curve to make sure you, the government got to get their money, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be on nobody's bad side. You know, I'm not greedy, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we're doing our taxes now, and that, that in and of itself, the terminologies and all that stuff, bookkeeping, all that's new to us. All that's new to us. But we're learning. Um, I got to get my administrator's license. Um, we got to go through the license. In order to get our license, we have to uh, get what's called a certificate of occupancy, which Basically, they send all of these inspectors, health, inspe health inspectors, fire department, you name it. They send them over here, water treatment. They send them over here and they go through your place like a fine tooth comb. And if they see anything out of the place, they fail you and they give you a certain amount of time. But every time you got to pay somebody to come back out there. So it's, it's got, I know I'm just preparing mentally and psychologically you know, to, to prepare for the, the heartaches and that. But whatever it takes, however long it takes, it's going to get done. All right, and uh, I, I plan on, um, you know, keeping a record by doing these videos. Uh, you know, I'm trying to be as real as possible. Not always will it be staged. Like, I ain't, ain't going to lie to you. No, I mean, this is staged. Yeah, this is my gym and whatnot, but I only come in here to, like, work out. So me sitting in front of the bag or whatnot is just, <laughs> that's just, uh, it's, it's, I just thought it would be a nice background or whatever instead of just watching the same old background all the time. But um, I can't think of anything else. Let me see. Ministry of operational costs, possibly income, profits, and charity business. Well, I think that's it for my notes that I took. Anyway, so, so yeah, so if you guys have any questions for me, you know, hit me a comment or private message me or whatever. Um, I'll be glad to fill you in on, on my experiences with this particular uh, avenue that, I'm ta that we're taking. Of course, there's many others. I've, I've a gentleman, um, uh, David's Angel, 
he had, he tipped me off on uh, e-commerce as a form. I, I'm still not entirely sure what that means. I'm assuming maybe that's like eBay and, and stuff like that, Amazon, selling goods online, I guess. Um, I still have to do some research on that. Maybe something we could look into. But uh, uh, David's Angel, he tipped me off on that. Thank you for that, David's Angel. Um, and congrats on your pregnancy. Um, this uh, couple, uh, I have to remember these channels, Yuri, Bruce, Yuri and Bruce. Um, I've sat down and watched some of their live chats and, and occasionally they talk about, you know, um, how to, you know, making money and, you know, making that move to the Philippines. Um, oh yeah, let's not forget uh, Black Filipino ex uh, and KD experience. There's like a lot of these, uh, Black and Filipinos, I mean, damn, you know, kind of makes me feel good as a black man, you know, saying that that uh, not only our own culture, you know, but other cultures find us interesting, too, you know, so. But yeah, so if you see me in the channel, say hello. I'll say hello. Um, I'm not doing this for money or monetization. However, if it is possible to do that and make a couple hundred, that could be sent to the Philippines. Uh, that would be nice. Uh, you know, I could probably even route that to somebody's Patreon or, or something like that or whatever. Somebody that's doing, like, like I think um, uh, the black Filipino, he gives, you know, he gives food and stuff like that. So could probably send it to him. But anyway, um, but yeah, uh, like this video if you liked it. If you don't like it, don't like it. Um, but subscribe to the channel. And uh, my catchphrase is uh, live life with love, peace, and happiness. And that's what it is. That's what it's about. I don't, I'm not trying to live my life until I'm old and gray and decrepit and, you know, or whatnot. I'm trying to enjoy life with my wife as, you know, as fast as possible. I don't know how much time God's going to give us. So, so, yeah. So that's it for now. Thanks for listening to me. Maybe this video was too long. I don't know. But uh, I said what I had to say. Until next time, God bless.